It's been about a month since I announced to you guys that I was expecting. I'll leave the video for that up here if you want to go check that one out. So far, that's the only like baby related video that I have made up until today. I felt like I hadn't done a woodworking project in a while, so I thought I would try my hand at making a little baby rattle. I was inspired by a fellow maker made by Mitch. I'll link to his YouTube down below and up in the corner, whichever corner. He made one that's a hippo, and the one that I'm going to be making today is an alligator. So let's get started. As usual, I'll put a materials and tools list in the description box below. For the body, I'm using poplar wood that's 3 fourths of an inch thick. I took the printed pattern and used spray adhesive to attach it to the wood. Then I used a hole saw to cut the hole in the middle of the pattern. I used a piece of scrap wood underneath it so that there wouldn't be too much of a blowout on the other side of the hole. The pattern has a hole that's about 2 inches wide, but I didn't have a hole saw that big, like I thought I did, so I just used the biggest one that we had and decided that if it looked too small after I cut out the shape of the alligator, then I would just cut it bigger by hand. So now I cut the alligator shape with my coping saw. Ideally, I would have used something like a band saw or a scroll saw, or maybe even a jigsaw, like Made by Mitch used, but we don't have a bandsaw or scroll saw yet, and I have no idea where our jigsaw is, so coping saw it was, which actually was kind of nice, because I could get a lot closer to the line with a lot more confidence with the coping saw. Anyway, once it was cut out, I thought the hole looked too small, so I had to cut it out by hand. This is where the coping saw is nice. You can undo the blade, thread the piece on, and then put the blade back in place so that you can cut the hole in the middle of the wood without having to like cut a little channel to get to the hole and have to glue that piece back together. Anyway, then I used a drill bit that was as thick as the dowel that I intend to use and drilled through the side through the middle of the hole. I started it right under the tail and went through to about where the eyeball will be. I went in about 1 fourth inch or so on the side that goes near the eye. I didn't go all the way through because it's not necessary. You just want enough so that the dowel can be glued into that spot. You can use pre-made wooden beads, but I decided to cut and shape some of my own. I cut three pieces of darker wood. I wanted one dark wood piece in the middle and two dark but lighter pieces of wood on either side. So I cut two blocks from the lighter dark wood and then one from the dark wood. Then I drilled a hole in the middle of these pieces with a bit that was one size bigger than the dowel size so they'd be able to slip on and move around easily. Then for the face, I drilled shallow holes for the eyes and the nose on each side with different sizes of drill bits. And then I used a Dremel tool to carve out the little mouth. I plan on filling these in with the sawdust from the dark wood pieces that I just cut, making a sort of inlaid wood kind of look. And now for everyone's favorite part of woodworking, sanding. Initially I used our belt and disc sander. You want to sand off the glued on paper first, and then after that you want to make sure to knock down any of the sharp edges. And with the beads, I sanded them down to be more round and knocked down some of the sharp edges on these as well. Also, be very careful if you're sanding like this. If you're not careful, your hand can easily slip and send your finger right into the spinning sandpaper. Years ago, this happened to me on a bigger disc sander, but thankfully at the time, my nails were pretty long, kind of like what they are now. So essentially, I just sanded my nail down to the skin instead of sanding the skin off of my finger. Anyway, because the sandpaper is pretty rough, I only did like the initial sanding with this, and then I did a lot of hand sanding with finer and finer sandpaper later. I'm usually pretty lazy when it comes to sanding, but for any kind of wood toy that you're making for a baby or a child, you really want to make sure you really sand this thing so that there's no chance of splinters. When I was pretty happy with how much it was sanded, I decided to do the wood inlay into the face. 
I took some of the sawdust that I had collected earlier and mixed it with some wood glue to make a paste like so. Then I squished it into the eyes, nose, and mouth. This looks quite messy initially, but once you sand it after it dries, it'll knock off all the extra sawdust and wood glue mixture, and then it'll leave the dark wood only where you want it. At this point, since I was going to have to wait for the glue to dry anyway, I figured I might as well just glue it all together. I stuck some wood glue into the hole on the inside of the body hole, and then I threaded the dowel through the um, butt hole. I threaded the beads on, and finally stuck the dowel all the way through and into the hole with the wood glue in it. This dowel should fit pretty snugly. You could kind of see when I was doing it. I was having a little bit of resistance pushing it through, but that's what you want because you really want this thing to stay in place. Just to make sure it was fully in, I tapped the dowel with a rawhide hammer a couple of times. I wiped the extra glue that squeezed off out of the hole, and then I used my coping saw to cut the extra dowel off on the butt side so that it was flush with the rest of the alligator, and then I sanded it smooth. Typically, you don't need to use wood glue on this side of the dowel because the glue on the other side should be enough to hold it in place, but I had a bit of a gap on this side from the drill bit wobbling a little bit when I drilled out the hole. So in order to fill that in, I dabbed on a tiny bit of wood glue and then sanded it some while the glue was still wet so that it would fill the gap with sawdust. Then I set this aside overnight to let the glue dry. The next day, when everything was dry, I sanded over the face to remove the extra wood glue and sawdust. And here's how it's looking. Finally, I rubbed on some non-toxic finish. There is probably a 100% chance that this thing will end up in the baby's mouth, so you really want to make sure you use some type of finish that is non-toxic, whether it be some kind of wax-based finish like I'm going to use, or paint, or whatever. The stuff that I'm using is stuff that I made a little while ago to finish leather. And actually it works great as a wood finish as well. It's an equal mix of beeswax and olive oil. You can use different types of oil. Made by Mitch uses castor oil. I believe you can use mineral oil. Usually that's what people use to finish wooden cutting boards and stuff. I'm sure you could probably find online the different types of oils that you could use in this mix that would be safe. And I thought it was kind of funny, once I applied the finish to the dark pieces of wood, the little rattle bead things, they all looked like the same kind of wood. As I mentioned earlier, I intended it to be one dark piece with a lighter dark wood piece on each side. Well, as you can see, that's not the look that happened. Oh well, I still really like how it turned out. So anyway, here it is, all done. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all of that good stuff. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, those will be linked down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping me produce this video. If you like my videos and have learned something from them, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me continue to make them. It's totally optional, I'll still be making videos either way, it just helps me be able to put out better stuff. A link will be down below, or you can just click up here in the corner.